Hey everyone, welcome to Like a Boss, insights with influencers, entrepreneurs, and badasses like you. And today I have a badass female entrepreneur, which I'm super excited about, and her story rocks, seriously. So please, please, please stay tuned. Make sure you like us on iTunes, Google Play, iHeart, Spotify, and soon to be Pandora, and Alexa. You know, I can't tell her name because she'll start talking back. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Like a Boss. All right, our guest today is Elaine Rao. You welcome, welcome. Are you there? Yes. Hi. So good to be here. Thanks for having me on the show, Heather. You're welcome. This is going to be a fun show. Ladies, listen up. She is a badass female entrepreneur. She's got a great story. I actually doing some business with her as well. And I think it's super fun. I told her, please, please, please come on because she's got a very, very, um, what I call it, it's a story she overcame. I think it's really important when we are put into situations, sometimes we either become resourceful or we become a victim. You have a choice and you have a very distinct choice in that time. I have been in those situations before and I feel like we all have that choice in some time and women specifically sometimes, unfortunately, choose the victim route. And I'm here to say, I myself and this badass woman here are survivors and thrivers and people that you can choose a different route even at the most desperate times. So Elaine, thank you for being here. I'm gonna share people with who you are so they know who you are, okay, ready? So it's for, she's a former national wedding sales manager and in one week, she lost her brother-in-law, her job, her home in one week. So we're gonna talk about that story today. Stuck in a developing country with no job opportunities, she had to learn how to make an income online ASAP. So she spent her last bit of savings, $12.18 to be exact, and invested in a blog domain, ladybossblogger.com. And since its inception, Lady Boss Blogger has garnished a massive audience of 150,000 people in under two years. It's a platform that helps female entrepreneurs learn how to start, grow, and scale their own online business and blogs. Wow. Elaine, thanks for being here. Thanks for that amazing introduction. <laughs> no, thanks for doing it. I mean, that's a boss. That's like hashtag like a boss right there. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, that's a pretty impressive situation. And I've been there. I've been there multiple times where you're looking at your bank balance or credit card balance. And you're like, like, how, how does this work exactly? You know? So I think that I want to share that if you don't mind sharing this week and what happened and and through the process in your mindset of ha what happened that, do you mind sharing that personal story at all? Yeah. Okay. So actually I didn't share my story for like an entire year afterwards because I was honestly terrified that my boss would like, I don't know, find me and like tear my business apart. So, <laughs> um, but basically I, um, I was working as a national wedding sales manager. I was in the wedding industry. I loved the wedding industry. I, I thought that that would be my career. That was the path I was on. However, um, everything changed with one phone call. Basically my fiance who was living in uh, Honduras at the time, he called me and told me that his brother had just been murdered. And, um, mm. so I was like, okay, obviously I have to be there with family right now. So I told my boss, I asked him if I could go attend the funeral and go to Honduras. And it, he said, no, because it would affect sales. So I was like, all right, obviously he's making me choose between family and work. And of course you're, you, you choose family. And so I quit, I moved overseas, um, without a job, without any, you know, basically, uh, no, no plans. And so when I arrived there, it was exciting but at the same time it's also like the murder capital of the world so it's not like the you know the, a paradise place at all um and also i didn't you know have anything to do so i mean after a few weeks being there i was really like okay you know feeling purposeless feeling passionless all my quote unquote wedding industry skills didn't mean anything there cuz number one i don't speak spanish so i couldn't you know even get a job there if i wanted to number two employment rate is like 80% of people there are unemployed. So it was just wow. impossible to even like find anything. So I had to like learn how to, um, I don't know, somehow make income online. Um, and so actually a, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually, um, when I was the, the, uh, working for a part-time thing or for something, just a stress reliever, I actually blogged for a online magazine. And so that was how I got my first initial blogging experience. And then when I was there, I wanted to get that feeling back and I never made any money with it. So I didn't even know it was possible, but all I wanted was that feeling. And so I equated blogging with happiness and stress relief. 
And mm. so that's why I actually started the blog. And then when I started it, I named it Lady Boss Blogger because that's who I wanted to become. I wanted to become a lady boss. So I needed to interview lady bosses to learn how to do that. And then I also needed to blog daily so I could learn how to become a blogger. So that was like the whole premise of how it, I, also, I started. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. So there's a couple of things with that I'm going to highlight because it's so awesome. And that is you created Lady Boss Blogger, not from perspective at first to make money. It was more like it made me feel good. I enjoyed it. And the, it was a stress relief. Is that right? Well, it, uh, well, when I was a blogger previously and worked for that online magazine, it was. And so I equated a blog mm. to these feelings. And so in order to get that back, so it wasn't all that when I started, it wasn't at up. It was far from that, but, um, I, 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 know, I knew I needed to reinvent myself. I knew I needed to learn a new skill set because what I was doing wasn't enough. So I had to, yeah. that's why I did that. Yeah. And what I think is really fascinating when you said, um, <laughs> my skill set of winning play doesn't really work in Honduras. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm, I'm laughing out of like, <laughs> I understand that. You know, I remember living in Marco Island, the average age is 80 in 2008 when there was zero job. And at that time I had spent almost 10 years at that point, almost in the corporate sales and beat in outside sales and traveling the country doing sales and all these in real estate investing. And I remember that feeling. I remember going, none of my skills belong here. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I remember trying to start a, start a business on dog walking. And I thought, okay, well, I like I could do that. Well, I didn't realize that with the average age of eighty, no one leaves their house. They don't go to work. <laughs> so right. they all are like, why would I need you to come and like walk the dog? Like I have the nurse that walks the dog, and I don't leave the house. So like, why would you? you know? I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. You know, like there's all these, and then like online marketing, no one's on online because they're all eighty, right? So there's all these things that like nothing was working, mm -hmm. you know, and all my skill set didn't quote unquote fit. And so I get that experience and I understand that feeling. It's very odd when you're like, you've been doing this for X amount of years and all of a sudden your skill set doesn't work. You're like, what? Right. Right. It's like very kind of, and then you don't speak the language, which I feel like I didn't speak the language of 80 years old either. So different, <laughs> different language barrier, but um, the same way. Right? Don't feel like you fit in. All right. So what brought you're in Chicago today? That was two years ago. Let's talk about your journey of building this baby. Has it all been guns and roses or all guns or all roses? How's it been? Uh, obviously, I would say, uh, you know, a mix of both, um, yeah. especially, I mean, the very first year, it was just brutal. I mean, I worked on my blog like 6 a.m. to midnight every single day. I posted a new blog post every single day. Just, uh, I feel like I was constantly learning and there was so much information to be digested that I was just constantly feeling like I was growing, but I was like crawling. You know, and so like I mean, every single time there was like a technical difficulty or whatever, I mean, I would just like spend like days like just learning how to do the most simple thing. You know, in retrospect, looking back, I was like, how did I not know how to do this? But I mean, it's a learning curve. So like, I mean, when you're self teaching yourself every single little thing, um, that's what you have to do. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely, it was a it was a crawl <laughs> for sure. Right, and that's everything. I want to kind of point that out that it takes a lot of action to get started. Um, I think I just posted something on Instagram today or recently that said, you know, re real businesses don't grow in a year, you know, and they don't grow in a year because honestly, I mean, you can't build an entire relationship in a year. You can't build an entire strong relationship in a year or a strong family in a year. It takes years of things that you bump up against and through that process, they become stronger. Um, same thing with business. A great business doesn't happen in one year. Even people that I know who are successful in, in network marketing to online marketing to whatever. I know some people are very successful, but it looks like they're extremely successful now. But if you hear their story, it's been like, oh, I've been doing this for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People say that to me all the time. So they see me and they go, oh, wow, you are so great. I'm like, let me tell you all the ups and downs and ups and downs. Let's talk about what your goal is. Where are you headed with this? Have you thought about that? Or right now, are you just still in that building process? Where are you in that phase? Um, I think I went through several different phases yeah. um, so far. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the first aspect was a growth. Second aspect was stability. And then I think now I'm back into growth stage, um, you know, with just like launching courses and just like scaling and learning how to make more use of my time um, 
instead of, uh, so, so basically maximizing my time with everything I'm doing. So I feel like I'm back into growth uh, and learning stage again right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so basically, the, yeah, the next stage is, is just courses and focusing on that. And I just emailed my audience literally um, in the, like at the beginning of the year. And they were like, uh, I asked everyone uh, what, like if they wanted like YouTube videos, if they want a podcast, if they wanted more online courses, you know, what did they want from me? And everybody said YouTube videos. So I was like, no, I hate being on camera. Honestly, I remember the first video recording that I did, I was shaking. Like my hands were like down here. Like you couldn't really see, but I was kind of like bobbing around and like, um, I scheduled actually three in a row. So I wouldn't be able to like cancel them. <laughs> and so I would like, be like accountable to doing them. And yeah, the first one was terrible was sweating second one my hands stopped shaking by the third one I was like okay I can do this but still like video is still like not my thing I just I prefer to hide behind the blog I don't want to always be on and present and you know what I mean like it's it's something else to be on camera and it's it's almost like a whole other layer, layer of vulnerability you're talking to talking to me girl yeah um, <laughs> I am I've been doing a video a day now for almost 60 days amazing yeah and it's <laughs> um i'm not gonna lie it's challenging way more challenging for females way more challenging for females so are you guys listening you're like whoa i mean i just watched a live stream yesterday and uh it was two dudes and they were did it for six hours which is super cray cray but whatever and what i noticed with them is they have full coal set up, so let's get that straight. But they're in like sweatshirts, you know? They're like in sweatshirts and they're like, hey, they was uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 was that, was that, was that, was that. You know, I'm like, girls cannot do that. Right. You know? Yeah. They can't, they can't. And it's, I call it women on women crime. So when I first started doing video, um, like two months ago, really like consistently, I was getting like women on women crime. Like, I don't like your hair. I don't like your outfit. I don't like your, outfit. and I'm like, dude, a dude can get on there and wear sweatpants and a gray t-shirt and you're good with that and haven't shaved in like a week, you know? So right. <laughs> it, it, women, well, first of all, women are women crime. I, I call it that. It's not that great. But number two, we, we have this view of like, oh my God, we look bad on camera. So I just encourage you, encourage all women, get in front of the camera, get over it, get through it, do it. It's challenging, but I highly suggest you do it because there is a breakthrough on the other side. I promise you. And even me, I'll give you a little tip, man, I don't do a lot of editing and I do that on purpose so that I just kind of create content and go. So mm -hmm. I think it's great that they're asking you to do that, by the way. Yeah, they're challenging me is what I like to think. <laughs> they are challenging you. So, okay, where are you headed? Where do you want to see this company grow into? Ultimately, I want to be able to have like just like, a, you know, um, be able to help um, like in developing countries who don't necessarily have like the resources to, you know, where they are currently, but they can utilize the internet to be able to, you know, grow a business or make money elsewhere and stuff like that. Cause that's how I started. And honestly, I mean, my, my husband's family is all from Honduras, right? And so they, I mean, they live in poverty. So, you know, just being living there and seeing that day to day, you know what I mean? Just a stark contrast is just so crazy that I want to be able to bring these resources to you know, developing worlds and, you know, to, to help more people than I guess just the States. So, so that's why you, you started. Do oh, you know ahead. your demographics at all of what your uh, breakdown is from the United States mm -hmm. to other countries? It's actually mostly in the States. Um, but, uh, we also have a huge following from Australia as well as Canada, the UK, the, m the majority is all, um, uh, big cities from around the world. Okay. That's, there are big cities from around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you, I'm just, these are just super curious questions I'm asking because it's ladybossblogger.com, by the way, ladybossblogger.com. Go check it out, share it. It's awesome. What do you find is like the demographic age range for mm -hmm. your, um, for your blog? 25 to 45 is the, is every, every, basically the majority. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. what do you find is the biggest challenges that you find? Cause you probably have a really true ear to what women want today, what are they you finding is their biggest challenging challenge to overcome? 
Um, I would say just getting started, honestly. A lot of people, they want to know how to start stuff. And so uh, I do a lot of stuff that, you know, basically how to start a money making blog, how to start making money as an influencer, how to start X, Y, Z. So it's, yeah, it's all about how to start because I I think, uh, you know, people need that accountability, you know, um, if they don't have that motivation for themselves or if they don't have a community, which can actually, you know, push them to, Mm -hmm. uh, to these resources. It's a really key piece. I mean, just like I, you know, we, I, did an article on your, on your lady boss blogger about how to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Cause just like anything, once you get going, get the rocket ship going, it's a kind of a, a what I call grind fight, re, fight, repeat. And I fight and my fight is just more of like, get in there and do it. But it's really a grind and repeat, grind and repeat. Once you do it once, it's just more of a repeat and then you grow and expand. When I first started, please tell me I'm doing lights and camera and I got this really cool thing. If you can see, it's got LIB like a boss and I got my whole thing. You should see the videos <laughs> that are out there from my first ones. Was they're it like bad. bling bling or something? Oh, they're bad. They're like bad lighting. Some of them are like, I'm in like a hat. I'm like, what's up? Like, I don't, you know, all this comes from just doing, 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 figuring out, tweaking what looks better, what looks better, what looks good. I just got a ring light. I mean, but I didn't get a ring light three years ago. I don't even know what a ring light was, you know? So I think part of the process is that people have to learn just to get started. Mm-hmm. Just get started. I, um, there's a guy that I met um, who does YouTube videos and he told people on stage, my videos are awesome, but please go back four years ago. Go, go back to my first they suck. You know what I mean? Like they're bad. Like they're really mm-hmm. bad. And even, um, the other day I just, just for sake of conversation, I went back to Marie Folio like 10 years ago in her videos and it's her in bed. She's literally in her uh-huh. bed. Uh-huh. Hey, it's Marie. I mean like really, you know, now she's got studio and like this and all that, but you've got to just get started. Just get started. Right. Yeah. I like to tell my blogging students that you have to learn to love the process if you're ever going to get the product because 99% of the time you're actually in process mode. Um, it's like that 1% that we strive for, even though it should be that 99%, which is, yeah, I said the process of like learning and, mm-hmm. and getting to that 1% and then celebrating that 1% and then moving on. So that's really good. Love the process, not the product. Mm-hmm. That's really good. You're wise for your little old age. <laughs> no, it's, really, it's really good. It reminds me of, of when I was in Marco Island, the average age was 80 and they were all retired and the retirement, like the, you know, the day you retire was such the product that some people, not everyone there, but some people forgot that it was about enjoying the process, enjoying the journey, enjoying life. Not just when you end up on the Island with a margarita in your hand, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of it. What about blogging? I'm going to ask you a question. What about blogging do you love and hate? (laughs) What is the one that you're like, oh, I hate this, but I'm doing it anyway. What's that? I love creating content. I love writing. I love being able to like, you know, all that stuff. Actually, sure. Kind of weird, but like I just love producing, and sometimes I don't take enough time to actually like share it on all channels so that people can actually see what I just created. <laughs> okay, so say so it again. I have my intro for me. <laughs> what part? Do, wait, say it again. What part do you not like again? Uh, so I said I really love creating content um, and just producing, producing, producing. But what I'm not too good at is actually promoting the content that I create. Oh, yeah. Right. So you and I are opposites. I love promoting not great at creating articles, as you know, as I told you when I sent well, you, you just my- created an awesome article for me. So I don't know what you're talking about. Thank but- you. <laughs> not very calm. I, but I did remember I emailed you and my girl, if you need to like, just like change that up, like you can change. Cause I know that's not, it's not my strength. I don't feel confident in it, but thank you for that. Um, but I don't feel confident in it. Put me in front of a camera, put me in front of a mic. I feel confident, promote, 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 feel confident. But like sitting down and writing, I literally like stifle. Do you, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I was three to four days late on my deadline with you. It's okay. (laughs) But I'll tell you why I'll be transparent. It's not because I didn't have the time. Every time that I had the time, I was like, Oh, I suck at writing. Like, I would sit down. I'm like, I know I can get this to Elaine. And I'm like, uh, right. If it was a video, if you asked me for a video that, that would have been done like in an hour that I, 
I would be complete opposite. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, I mean, I felt bad because remember I was like, oh, I'll get it to you in a day or two. And I remember when I sat down and did it, I had to like, everything had to be quiet. I had to turn off everything. And I had to like concentrate really hard for like three hours. <laughs> I did. And it was late. At, I went to this office I sometimes go to and it was late at night. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, shh, I'm writing an article you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually what I, well, I like to just outline everything, you know, once you have everything outlined and you like know what you are, you know, going to do, like, it's easy to fill in the paragraphs. Yeah. Well, so tell us what you do. So maybe I just need to learn how you do it. What's your process for creating an article? Yeah. Cause honestly, I used to be like that. Like okay. it was a process to get to like writing like I do now. So I actually learned it from an intern of mine. <laughs> like she just wrote incredible articles for me. And I was like, Bethany, how, I want you to write an article about how you write your articles because okay. they're incredible. And she basically, she taught me that like, she just breaks it down. She just outlines everything. And she did this with everything she did for me. Um, and so just, you know, she, she would write her intro actually at the, the very last and she would write mm -hmm. like everything, like her subheadings, you know, first, and, and then, you know, fill in the paragraphs and whatever. And then after the conclusion, she would fill in the intro and then have a stunning uh, 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 title for title. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so break that down because you went really fast. Let's break that down. So, so starting with the subheadings uh -huh. and then filling those in with paragraphs, finishing it off with the conclusion, uh, filling in the intro, and then I like to do the intro first and then do subheadings, paragraph, conclusion, and then the title. But you can also, you know, do the intro later. It, it's, it's kind of personal preference. But basically having a structure at least of what you're doing so that you're like organized in that sense. That would have really helped me. So I'm just going to repeat it for everybody. So sub subtitles first, mm -hmm. right? Then the content of the mm -hmm. subtitles. Conclusion, go back up, do intro, go back up and do title. I couldn't see how that process would work. I did not do that on yours. Um, but the structure came out that way though, which was it did it? it did. It did. You said, why is podcasting so powerful? And you had four points and a conclusion. So... It, you, you actually did do that structure. Yeah. I'm just being transparent here, girl. Like I sent that to you going, oh, she's going to hate it. And that's why <laughs> I, I gave you like full permission, like just balk it, whatever you need to do, girl. Um, I, it's not my strength, but I love the structure and I can really own that process. So let's talk about blogging in general. Is blogging in, is blogging 2019 dead? I would say that's highly controversial, especially talking to a blogger, <laughs> yeah. but definitely not. Why is because content marketing is just growing. Blogging is literally content marketing. If you see all the advertisers out there, all the companies, no matter what industry you are, content marketing is king right now and it's only projected to grow. So if you're not blogging, you're not doing you know, all this stuff, you don't have to necessarily be a full-time blogger, but if you're a content creator, that's what you need to be on right now. Um, and so regardless of what you're promoting, if a service, a product or whatever, if you don't have content behind it, you're losing out on a lot of sales. Um, I would, oh, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Keep going. Um, I would say the second point is um, definitely, I, okay, I wrote down, um, influencer marketing, which is also projected to be a humongous growth, um, like 400 times that, you know, 400% of what it even was last year. And um, it's just continued to grow. And that is also, that's primarily based off of content marketing as well. But if you notice, like I've worked with a lot of brands and I would say 85, 90% of the brands, if you do not have a blog, they won't pay you as much or they won't even want to work with you because number one with a blog, you have the ability to not only sway your audience, you have a, a presence on Google. You know what I mean? You have SEO right. juice, you have search engine capabilities, you know? So like, you're not just a social media star. Um, you're actually helping their business in a, a much deeper way as well. So, um, that's really true. That's really true. Um, <clears throat> I mean, in the, in the influence, I'm going to step in for a second. So one of the things I talk about the influencer growth formula and what I talk about on your blog is that podcasting is a great way to create that content, constant content, right? And then adding that piece of the influence, how do you shift that influence, which is what you're here, you're saying to me is that blogging is truly real because it is that SEO conversation on Google. Once you create that content, it's up there for forever, you know, good or bad, it's up there forever and it creates that SEO juice, right? So what is the third reason why a, a blogging is still 
awesome in 2019 and beyond? Um, personal brands are growing. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, working in corporate, like everybody that it's like the new resume, you know what I mean? If you don't have a personal brand, you're behind, you know, and a personal brand basically is just like you talking about maybe, you know, your expertise or your whatever in a packaged format. Um, and the best way to do that to combine all three and to create an impactful personal brand is to do the content marketing on your blog, be that influencer on your blog. And then your personal brand is a combination of all of those three things. So, I mean, it, it just all goes hand in hand. So, okay. I'm going to repeat that. Cause that was really great. So number one, um, go through them again. Uh, no, number one is content marketing. Number two, influencer marketing. Number three, personal brand. So some people might think, well, Elaine, influence and content marketing are the same. Are you uncollapse those for us or maybe distinguish that for people? Uh, why I say them as separate is I think influencer, a lot of influencers actually do not have a blog where right. they create content. So that's right. why I'm separating the two. Uh, I would say for a content creator, uh, I guess I should just say a blogger, perhaps, you know, a blogger versus an influencer. Um, there are blogger blogging influencers and then there's separate as well. So that, 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 that's what I mean. And there's okay. also different kinds of content creators. There's video content creators. There's, there's blog, you know, written there's, there's podcasters, there's different kinds. So. Okay. Do you find that cause you're going to, you're about to go in multimedia cause right now you've been blog only. You really haven't gotten into multimedia, which I mean by that is YouTube and podcast. Correct. Not yes. yet. Which you will, because I'm going to be talking to you about that after camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> she will. Don't worry, everyone. She will. With my little hands, she will. Um, so you haven't really gone into the multimedia side yet. So your content currently, as of right now, it's just been, let's call it just blogging only, right? Like mm -hmm. just, just words, word content, right? Correct. Okay. And you've gone from zero to where currently, what is your numbers online? Um, 150,000 um, across my channels. Nice. Congratulations. That's super awesome. Um, that's, no, that's super awesome. And are you tapping into other kinds of advertising networks or what's the model of someone's listening going, how the heck does she make money with a free blog? I think that's what we were listening. It's, like, uh, it's not a free blog. That's how, that's how you make money with it. <laughs> right. That's so, so true. a lot of people out there. I mean, I, I, first off, I bought the blog for 12 bucks and 18 cents, even though yes, it's like a tiny number. Uh, obviously I have had to pay, you know, you did the different domain Post fees and different stuff like that. But like the fact was that I purchased it. Um, you cannot actually monetize a free blog. Why? Because it's not yours. Uh, it's not yours to sell. It's kind of like you renting a house out. That's not your own. You know what I mean? So you have to purchase it and own it in order to, to, to monetize it. That's really interesting. Okay. I love how you said that, by the way. That's good. Okay. So how do you monetize? Give me three ways how you monetize your blog today so people understand it. So, um, there's three major things that I do. Number one is affiliate marketing. So basically what you do in affiliate marketing is you promote someone's product and you get a commission off of it. Um, so you can do this, uh, by writing blog posts and, you know, uh, including your affiliate link in there, you can do this on social media and post the photo and then, you know, have a promo code. And when people plug that promo code in, you get a commission. Um, you can do this on YouTube, you know, where, where you do the same thing and then you say, Hey, click the, click the link below. And that's your affiliate link. Um, in regards to uh, the, the second way I do it is um, online courses. So basically you package all of your knowledge um, that people are asking for. And, and a very important thing to do is you have to build an audience before you create a course. A lot of people like to create a course before an audience and then they have nobody to sell it to and they're like, online courses don't work. And it's like, well, because you didn't take the time to actually learn what people want from you. Because honestly, I didn't want to blog about blogging. I didn't want to like be you know what I mean? I talked about entrepreneurship. I talked about business. I talked about different things like that, but like blogging specifically, I was just a blogger who just happened to create a very successful blog. And then people started asking me, how did I create my blog? So then I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm getting overwhelmed with all these emails. Let me just create a course without, you know, to answer all their questions. So like if I hadn't built an audience before my course, I wouldn't have even known they wanted me to blog about blogging. And I would have created a course about entrepreneurship and they'd be like, uh, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't even have bought it. So basically like, so creating a course after you built an audience, uh, uh, learning exactly what it is they want from you so that you literally have customers waiting for you 
when you launch your course. Yeah, um, exactly. That is so true. You got to build the audience first. That's critical. Mm -hmm. And how, where was your audience when you said, I'm going to do my, where, like, where were you at in your audience level before you create your first course? Uh, I would say a year and a half afterwards. So probably about at a hundred thousand followers. Um, mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I was like, honestly, nothing. If you don't have them in your email list, they're literally not, not useless, but like um, they're not your asset, I would say, because you're building other people's platforms, such as like your Facebook allows you to have a, you know, a little link on their website. Instagram allows you to have a handle on their website. But if they were to shut you down for whatever reason, they could because they own it versus if you have their email and it's in your actual, you know, you purchase the um, email providers uh, service, then it's your asset. And so that's like one thing I would have done way differently. Like I didn't start my list until I hit a hundred thousand followers. And I'm like, if I had a hundred thousand email subscribers, man, like I could have been, you know, at a whole other level. So that's something that was not super stressed about that. I would, I stressed every single one of the, the my, my students. I'm like, yes, this is what you need to start ASAP. Um, yeah. It's a really great. Cool. Go ahead. Oh, uh, the third way of making uh, money blog. I do is blog posts. So you know, whether companies reach out to you and they want you to write it or they want to write it and post it on your blog, you know, vice versa, but basically sponsored content. Um, however that, you know, that looks like it could be influencer campaigns as well. Um, there's a whole variety of ways to do it. Yeah. That's a really critical piece. Um, it is the email. That's really, 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 really critical. Um, okay, great. So I, we could talk forever about this and I just <laughs> want to share with people, where can they find you? Um, where can they reach out to you the most Where when they find you? Um, I'm everywhere on uh, Lady Boss Blogger, or my personal brand is Elaine Rao, which is E L A I N E R A U, and that's everywhere as well. Um, like Elaine Rao.com, Elaine Rao Official, you know, it's one of those um, across, you know, like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Medium, Tumblr, uh, like everything written, uh, you know, I'll, I'm there. <laughs> you're there. You're there. Okay. Well, check her out at, at ladybossblogger.com as well. When you're on there, go ahead and search my name, Heather Havenwood, because I have a good two or three articles on there as ready. So check that out. It's ladybossblogger.com. And you are definitely like a boss. Boy, yeah. You're an officially boss awesome tribe member. Officially. <laughs> officially. You can just like own that. You're definitely a lady boss and a girl boss. So we got to that sweet. And my name is Heather Havenwood. Check us out at heatherhavenwood.com. You can also check us out at iHeart, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, and Roku, and soon to be Pandora and Alexa. You can't say it too loud because she always talks. All right, everyone, this is Heather Havenwood, heatherhavenwood.com.